A homegrown motorcycle ride hailing company has committed to support the Philippine government's program to boost employment. MJ Modehar, tell us more. The cooperation between the government and the private sector in creating jobs for Filipinos continues. And one of the key players in this effort is the homegrown motorcycle ride hailing company, Ancas. George Royeka, CEO of Ancas, said that the company is dedicated to providing more jobs for Filipinos. But how? They plan to turn many Filipinos into nanopreneurs. This is one of the initiatives pushed by President Bombo Marcos, Royeka said, during the recent ASEAN Summit in Indonesia. Isa pong uh, agenda dun sa ASEAN Summit is yung tinatawag po ng presidente na nanopreneur. At oh, ito po ay mas maliit sa micro-entrepreneur at I think uh, represents a large uh, number of our workforce. Angkas riders qualify as nanopreneurs because they use motorcycles for their livelihood. This aligns with President BBM's goal of providing decent jobs for many Filipinos through the Motorcycle Micro-Business Program. And Angkas is committed to collaborating with the government on this initiative. We hope to provide uh, or create an ecosystem that legitimizes ang tinatawag nating nanopreneur or informal sector para talagang uh, mabigyan, ma-empower po natin a large portion of our population. The company aims to convert 18 million motorcycle owners into nanopreneurs and improve earnings from motorcycle taxis. Based on latest data, Angkas already has over 28,000 partner riders in various parts in the Philippines, including Metro Manila, Greater Manila Area, Metro Cebu, and Cagayan de Oro. The company plans to continue its collaboration with the government, especially in the full legalization of motorcycle taxis in the Philippines. They're actively contributing inputs to the forthcoming legislation. Kaya po natin magbigay ng trabaho sa milyong-milyong Pilipino dito sa industry na to at lahat ng pong hard work na ginagawa ng ating mga babatas, ng executive branch, ng DOTR at LTFRB. Um, very promising po na finally makakamit na po sa mga probinsya, lahat ng mga habal-habal na maging lihiti mo at magkaroon po sila ng um, trabaho. Motorcycle taxi operations in the Philippines are still in a pilot program. For Ghana Mobile of Philippines, I'm Jay Mondihar, SMNI News. Criticisms continue to pick on the confidential funds requested by the office of the vice president. But did this move violate the constitution when it transferred 125 million pesos in confidential funds to the said office in 2022? A veteran lawmaker will give us a clear explanation. Let's find out in MJ's Mondehar's report. Vice President Sara Duterte made headlines recently due to her use of 125 million pesos in confidential funds, which were allegedly not part of the OVP's 2022 budget. The funds came from the office of the President. During the plenary deliberations for next year's national budget, former House Appropriations Chairman Isidro Ungab was compelled to explain the issue. He clarified that there was nothing wrong with transferring the funds from the office of the President to the Vice President's office because they were drawn from contingency funds. It was requested by the OVP to DBM. The DBM evaluated it and requested the approval of the office of the president. And the president himself approved to release from the special purpose funds. The special purpose funds that includes the contingency fund, which is the source of those 125 million plus uh, something like uh, another amount for other expenditures. Unga further explained that the funds were not an augmentation for the vice president's office, but rather a new appropriation for contingency funds. He also emphasized that there was no need to itemize how the funds would be used. Pag augmentation, kailangan mo, kung galing ka sa savings, there must be an existing budgetary item. This is not coming from savings. This is not coming from augmentation. This is coming from contingency fund which allows new and existing appropriations. Members of the opposition in Congress have been questioning the use of the OVP's confidential funds. However, the Makabayan Bloc admitted that they had no concrete evidence to support their alleged misuse of the Vice President's office funds. For Ghana of the Philippines, MJ Mondeha. SMI News. President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. distributed the confiscated and smuggled rice to low-income families in Zamboanga. Joris Bonifacio files this report. 
On Tuesday, President Ferdinand Marx Jr. handed out 1,500 bags of rice to the beneficiaries of the Pantawid Pamilyang Pilipino Program or 4 Peace in Zamboanga City as well as in Tungawa and Zamboanga Sibugay. This is amid PBBM's visit to the National Food Authority or NFA Region 9 warehouse in Zamboanga City on Tuesday, September 19, 2023. Ako ay nag-inspeksyon lamang at makita talaga Kung ano ba ang nangyayari, hindi lamang doon sa NCR, sa Maynila, kung hindi pati na rito, sa kabilang dulo naman ng, uh, ng Pilipinas, dito sa Sambuanga, eh, para naman makita natin na lahat ng ating mga kababayan ay eh, nasusuportahan at na, kung sino man ang nangangailangan ng tulong ay nabibigyan ng tulong. In his speech, President Marcos said that the rice he distributed was part of 42,180 smuggled bags of rice worth 42 million pesos. It was confiscated by the Bureau of Customs, Port of Zamboanga, after the agency raided the warehouse in Barangay San Jose, Gusu, Zamboanga City on September 15 this year. PBBM praised the BOC for successfully seizing more than 42,000 sacks of rice. Meanwhile, President Marcos assured that the government and its administration are working tirelessly to end smuggling, which has affected the country's agricultural sector. The president said he had instructed the Bureau of Customs to further intensify the campaign against smugglers to put an end to their illegal operations. The chief executive maintained that the government followed due process in confiscating smuggled items by giving the respondents a 15-day notice to hit their side. Ginawa namin ang proseso. Ang proseso na ganito ay sasabihin doon sa nagpasok, magpaliwanag kayo. Saan galing yan? Saan kayo nagbayad ng uh, taripa? Saan kayo nagbayad ng tax ninyo? Saan kayo mga lahat ng mga pangangailangan dokumento? Natapos na po ang 15 days, hindi po sila makasagot. Kaya kinuha na namin, kinuha na ng gobyerno, kinuha na ng customs at ginawang donation sa DSWD at gagawing donation ng DSWD at ng gobyerno sa inyo. DSWD Secretary Rex Gachalian was also present at the rice distribution in Zamboanga along with officials from the Department of Agriculture, NFA, and BOC. President Marcos Jr. also led the distribution of various assistance from the Department of Agriculture, Bureau of Fisheries and Aquatic Resources or BFAR, and Department of Labor and Employment or DOLE to the intended beneficiaries in Zamboanga. For God in my beloved Philippines, I am Joris Bonifacio, SMNI News.